Hey folks, welcome to the So You Want to Publish Your Book podcast presented by the Small Tooth Dog Publishing Group. My name is Sean Bavala, and I'm the publisher and the chief janitor at the Small Tooth Dog Publishing Group. We're glad you're listening today. Our first episode is an interview with author Mark Severson, who just released a brand new children's book entitled Don't Throw Me in the Choya Patch, of course, published by us. Mark has a lot of different books out, but this is his first children's book. We hope you enjoy this interview. This was recorded at the Tucson Festival of Books out there in the wild. A lot of our interviews are done that way. The sound comes and goes a bit, but there's also a transcript attached. We're glad that you're listening. Don't forget to visit us at smalltoothdog.com. Here's me and Mark talking books. Hey, uh, this is John Bavala with the Small Tooth Dog Publishing Group, and I'm talking today to one of our new authors, although you've been around the block for a while. Uh, one 30 of our years new authors, or so, Mark, yeah. Se- Mark Severson, <laughs> and uh, he has just released with us Don't Throw Me in the Choya Patch, uh, the uh, Wood Rat and Coyote story, the first of the Wood Rat stories. Absolutely. That's good. Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, I like to say that over the last 30 years, I've become an overnight sensation. Yes, that's right. That's all it takes is 30 years. Yeah, so you've been fantastic. Hey, so we are really pleased to see this book come out with you. Not and, as pleased uh, as I was. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, look, even your name is on it. I know. It's right. Yeah, that way. When you... Uh, where did the story come from? What, where's that's the that, kind of the history? That's of a that? great question. When I was an archaeologist, I used to be out in the Sonoran Desert, and I'd find these piles of brush and such, and they were surrounded by choya. Yeah. And I always wondered about them, and and the fellow that I was doing the survey with said they were wood rat nests. Yeah. Right. And I and I just thought, wow, what a fascinating creature that can bring choya to its nest to protect it from all the other animals. I, Nobody else wants to touch it. No! <laughs> How smart. <laughs> That's right, good. Did you, is this a story you've been telling? Kind of, what's the, how did, how did the story develop? I've been telling wood rat stories off and on for a couple of years. Not very many, actually, because it took me a while to kind of put it together. A lot of stories, some stories come easily, some stories take a long time. And this one took a while because I couldn't think of, a, of the, the item that I wanted to install, and then when I remembered the old briar patch story, oh, yeah, right. it all came together. So right. I said, oh, I got it. You know, I, I figured it out. You know, so it took a while to, to, to put it together, but then I've been telling it about two years now. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that story is the tail type, a lot of people will say rare rabbit or something uh-huh. like that, but there's it's a tail type. Yeah. It's a kind of story of, of don't... Uh, I'm begging. I'm begging for you not to put me where I grew up. That's right. You know, and so the tail type has existed for. The tail type has been around for a really long time, so that's not necessarily new. Um, but your reframing of it is that. Um, why? Why Sonoran Desert? What's? I mean, it's, it's what I know best. I, I've, I've lived here since uh, 1964. Yeah. I was an archaeologist uh, for. Well, I've, I've been an archaeologist all through it. But part time and full time, full time for a while, then part time, and then I taught out in the out on the Tonawatham Reservation for four years. I did tours out on the I've done tours out on the reservation for many years for Pima College. Um, uh, it, I, I I know the desert. Yeah, I'm a desert rat. Right. Yeah. There I am. Well, and, and, and both I mean both of us have been here a long time. Uh, you've done more direct work out in the wild than I have. Yeah, I've been, been in some here, wild places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've been here for a really long time. But your background is not just is not just BLM or anthropology. You, you've taught too. Yeah, I taught for 25 years. I taught public school right. for 25 years. I taught for the state for seven years uh, in uh, developmental disabilities, yeah. preschool and uh, and the zero to five. Uh, children. So I've, I've had a, a, a lot of education background. When I left archaeology full-time, I went to teaching and did archaeology part-time as my side job because I was a teacher, sure. so I had a side job. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, right. That's all there is to it. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, we're at the Tucson Festival of Books, and you just did a performance up there on that stage up there. Uh, that was really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the funnest thing I do. And it showed. I think um, 
like I love storytelling and I'm a storyteller really? myself, right? Really? How about that? Yeah. But I, those like little kids like that, I, that's not my thing. But then when I watch somebody who's really good at it, <laughs> yeah, they don't scare me. That crowd, uh, when you did the little uh, the hunt. Uh -huh. and all of the pulling and the gestures and all that. Uh, that crowd was little ones, uh -huh. who were probably the oldest is like 12 and Grace. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. You know, and so, but you had them all in it. They were good. They were they were involved. They were they were all participating is what it comes down to. Yeah. And you get them going, you get them involved, and they'll come right along. As a friend of mine used to say, I, I run right along the edge of losing control, but I never quite do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your facial work is really good on that. Um, particularly, I'm thinking like at the end with the bear. Yeah. And you pull up with the bear and how, just how how well, because that's kind of a concept. It's kind of a deeper concept. It's like, you're talking to these kids, you're doing very direct stuff. Da, 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 da. And then it's like grab, and then you grab the bear. That's not, that's abstract. Yeah. It's really abstract. And But you convey to the kids so well you didn't over explain it, which I think is a terrible thing a storyteller to over explain. <laughs> you didn't over explain it, you just you pulled them with you. So it was really. If you take it too far, you're going to lose them. So you, you got to do it quick. Um, quick and uh, dirty. Quick and dirty, yeah. yes. Well, that, yeah, right. Uh, our goal with you is to try to produce a series. I would love it. What are we talking about? What are we thinking about next? I, I am hoping that we can go to uh, Woodrat and Badger yeah. because that's one of my favorites. I really like that story. And uh, to be honest with you, the badger is kind of my totemic animal. Really? Uh, yeah. I was I, when I was worked in archaeology. One of my archaeology pals nicknamed me the badger because I was short, squat, and liked to dig. You know, moved a lot of dirt. So, uh, so I, that's kind of. And I have a lot of I have a lot of Zuni badger fetishes at home, and yeah. it's just been my kind of my nickname. If, but if they don't call me the bear, they call me the badger. So. Yeah, I I think out of all the stuff I've looked at, I mean, I think that we have three at least three in the series coming. I think that's where we're gonna go. Um, assuming we can get the artist on board with Absolutely, um, I love the artist. So if we can go with Francesco or Zini some more, uh, Badger probably next. Sounds you know, good. And it's a very similar kind of story about, you know, hey, don't go in there and eat them, but then the Badger does something else to get, kind of... Getting somebody to do something that right. they think they're doing for them, but you're, they're really doing it for you. It has uh, <laughs> it has kind of that uh, Tom Sawyer-ish thing. Yes. You know, but, you know, all painting the painting fence, the fence. Like, you know, yeah, like, you know, oh, digging in the dirt is yeah. so oh, much fun. You know? really enjoy it. And I, and I don't know where my babies are. <laughs> they could be in there. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's good stuff. Um, you also publish other work as well. Yeah. I've, Tell me about some of your other stuff. I've self-published uh, four novels in a series. Uh, it's a Lovecraft-inspired uh, horror fantasy. Uh, that was. Um, it actually came from a bunch of short stories I wrote when I was in college. Some. 40 years ago, and then when I started, when I retired, I started writing them, and it became novels, and it just went on its own. And um, I call it the Chaos Series. The first one is Chaos Territory, and then just recently I published uh, through iUniverse uh, Bits of Sky, which is uh, based on some sites I dug over a period of a couple of years up near Globe. I just took the sites and I turned them into the locations for a novel and wrote a novel yeah. around the site. So they act, they're actual places, yeah. and I, I kind of use things we found there in the in the novel. It's, I like it. Cool. Okay, very good. Very nice. Uh, well, before the wind pushes our microphone out completely, uh, thanks. This is this book is great. Uh, this television Thank you. Is great. Uh, I'm happy to be making this happen. So that's that's a good thing. All right, it's Sean Bavall, Mark Severson from the Small Tooth Dog Publishing Group. Uh, we're talking about Don't Throw Me in the Troya Patch, which is the latest release from two of us. You can find this one at troyapatch.com. You find information about Mark there as well, how to do that. Uh, school shows we're doing, uh, whatever. I'm Teacher everywhere. I'm everywhere. Good. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, man. Great. Thanks. Yeah, just hit the little red button. Hey, thanks for listening. You can find Mark's book at troyapatch.com. That's spelled C-H-O-L-L-A-P-A-T-C-H, troyapatch.com, or visit us at smalltoothdog.com. Thanks for listening.